Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to what I believe is my first ever theory video. I've been doing YouTube for like eight years now and never done one. I'm not sure how knowing me, but I'm excited to get into this today. I, like many people, believe that House of Arun was too underutilized within Starfield's base game and believe that they will play a major role within the DLC. And if you can't tell by my conspiracy board, I am going absolutely insane. I believe that the Great Serpent is not one, but two snakes, and that House Varun will cause the shattering referred to in Shattered Space to free the Great Serpents, and I've got the proof. First, you need to understand who House Varun are. So I'm gonna break down a rough timeline of events then discuss all the lore I've been able to discover. We'll talk about some real world religious connections and then we can get into the actual theory. Also, this video will contain major spoilers for the ending of the game, just so you know. Starting off with the timeline, 2190, a UC colony ship gets lost and Janan makes first contact with the Great Serpent. It is specifically mentioned that he first heard from the Great Serpent while he was grab jumping. 2230, House Varun reveals themselves to settled space, giving off a peaceful facade, which only lasts for about 10 years. 2240, Janan starts the Serpent's Crusade, a 23 year that leaves countless dead on both sides, which only ended in 2263 when Janan Varun dies and his son Jarek sues for peace. So in total, this is a 73 year gap here. Maybe the UC is wrong on the timeline, but Janan was very old when he died, which micro theory number one makes me believe he was a child or a teenager when he was first encountered by the Great Serpent. It should also be noted that following this event, the majority of House Varun wanted to repair relations with the rest of the galaxy, and they would spend the next almost 50 years trying to do this. Which leads us to 2311, the armistice was signed by the three major factions, which does include House Varun, and then they retreated to their section of space where they remain hidden to this day. Now, let's talk about House Varun and what we actually know. Their home planet is named Varun Kai, which I just wanna say is metal as hell, and their capital city is named Dazra. Politically, they're one of the largest factions in game, being large enough to be included in the Vanguard's museum and to be the third faction to sign the armistice, a treaty for a war they didn't even fight in. It should also be noted that Balmor claims this was the will of the Great Serpent. Originally, they were led by Janan and his son Jarek, but now they are led by a high council. They value secrecy and protecting Varun Kai. The spies they send out are jumped out of the system to another location. They cannot jump themselves. This is done to protect Varun Kai. It also means the spies they send out cannot return home unless summoned. The reason they use spies, especially ones that work with smugglers, is claimed to be a way to protect themselves. They believe the rest of the galaxy still does not trust them, and so they keep a watchful eye out, and Andresia claims working with smugglers is the only way they can get the supplies they need, as they don't have an open trade agreement with the rest of settled space. Andresia makes remarks on how many people live in New Atlantis and how this makes her uncomfortable. This leads me to believe that House Varun is spread out, maybe featuring many smaller cities or settlements. They also teach that anyone who doesn't follow the Great Serpent is not important. In my opinion, this isolation of their people is not the best look for them. Definitely gives me cult vibes. Another thing I wanted to point out is the scorch marks from their guns leave a very specific pattern, almost like a galaxy whenever it hits. In terms of known Varun, we have three sections, Embassy, Spies, and Zealots. From the Embassy, we have Balmor, who I will say just wants peace, wants his people to be seen as more than just slaughterers. Then we have Andresia and Tomasar, who serve as spies and smugglers for the High Council. And lastly, from the Zealots, we have Mirza, their ships feature a unique set of names, including Hymn, Revelation, Litany, Eulogy, and several others. But there's one specific ship I want to discuss, and that is the legendary ship Shroudbearer. Shroud meaning to conceal, and bearer a person who carries something. 
My second mini theory here is that the Zealots are still a part of the main Varun faction, and their job is to distract the UC and Free Star Collective from searching for Varun Kai. Why go looking for House Varun when you have them on your front porch? That paired with their spies makes me think they're up to something big they don't want the rest of Settled Space to know about. We also know that Tomasar is still in contact and working with the Zealots. Now I want to talk about what we know about the Great Serpent. I believe, based on the statues within the House Varun Embassy, that he is a cobra, and a rearing one at that. He is said to be fate itself and to be as complicated as the galaxy. Andresia tells the player that he created the galaxy. He breathed life into it, and currently is slumbering. But when he awakes, he will encircle the galaxy, and his promise will be rewarded, while all others will be cast into shadow. It should also be noted that Andresia feels as though the Zealots have twisted the teachings of the Great Serpent. So I think to understand the Great Serpent and House Varun, we need to take a look at our real-world belief systems and religions to see where Bethesda may have pulled inspiration from. Now, I'm going to be talking about a lot of religions here. My intentions are to be as respectful as possible, but if I get anything wrong, please let me know in the comments below. The symbol for House Varun, and then the Great Serpent himself, is an Ouroboros. An Ouroboros is a snake or dragon eating its own tail. It can also be depicted as two serpents eating each other's tail. The Ouroboros is a symbol that has appeared in multiple different religions spread across thousands of years. But what does it mean? Most cultures saw it as infinity, wholeness, cycles of birth and death, cycles of nature, and the expression of unity of all things. The first appearance of the Ouroboros was found in a funeral text dated around 13th to 14th century BCE. Here, we are shown a scene of Mahin, a serpent god protecting the sun god Ra. He is also known to be a warden of criminals. Then, two other Egyptian gods I wanted to discuss were Ajet and Apophis. Neither are in Ouroboros, from what I know, but I believe still have a connection to House Varun. Wajet is also seen as a protector, and a ferocious one at that. She is also known for guiding the royal families. But I think her biggest connection to House Varun is the fact that she is seen as a rearing cobra goddess. And what do we see in the House Varun embassy? That's right, a rearing cobra. This could be a coincidence, but I don't think so. There is already a goddess who uses this exact same symbol. There has to be a connection here. And then Apophis, a serpent god of evil and destruction, whose goal is to stop Ra and ensure that the sun never rises again. He leads an army of demons and is said to live in eternal darkness. Which Andresia tells the player directly that the non-believers will be cast into shadows. Now, we get the word Ouroboros from the Greeks. I couldn't find any direct references to a story or myth featuring an Ouroboros, but I may have missed it. But the word Ouroboros comes from the word aura meaning tail and boros meaning eating. Then another and maybe the most well-known Ouroboros would be the Norse giant Jormungandr, said to be so large he encircles the whole world biting his own tail, which directly connects to the great serpent encircling the galaxy. We also know that Jormungandr was tossed into the sea by Odin, an important connection I would like to bring up later. Then he is one of the bringers of Ragnarok, it's said when he stops biting his own tail, it would begin. When this happens, he will rise from the sea, creating tsunamis around the world. He then poisons the waters and shoots a venomous mist strong enough to kill gods. The Aztecs also worshipped a god known as Quetzalcoatl, a feathered serpent who is sometimes depicted as an Ouroboros. There are several different interpretations of Quetzalcoatl, ranging from a god of wind and rain to being a god of literally everything. But he was seen as a protector and hero of his people. He also has the ability to transform into a man, another point I'd like to bring up later. An important note is that he's often seen as a god of duality. His serpentine body represented the earth, while his bird-like wings represented the divine. And as such, he is seen as a boundary maker between the earth and the sky. The Gnostic version of the Ouroboros was also meant to represent the unity of earth and the divine. And again, we also see it depicted as surrounding the world. In Roman Mithraism, it is stated that when Mithras is reborn, it is from a rock surrounded by a snake. 
and it is widely believed that the rock is supposed to represent the cosmos. In Hinduism, we see the Asuti, a giant serpent Ouroboros who surrounds the cosmos and forms the base underneath the world turtle, which to be fair, I could only find one reference to this, while other references show the cosmic turtle being the base. So this information may not be accurate. Then I also saw references to Shakti being an Ouroboros as well. It is stated that she is an endless Ouroboros representing the cycle of samsara, which is the reincarnation cycle. And lastly from Hinduism, I want to discuss the god Varuna, whose name may have been the inspiration for House Varun. Varuna is the personification of divine authority and rules over the sky realm. Many religions view the Ouroboros as a representation of infinity, but some believe it represents the finite nature of creation and the cynical nature of time. Aido Hoido is found in multiple religions across the world. And so not every story matches up, and oftentimes even their name is different based on where you are. But it is said that they were used to help create the world, and now resides underneath it. They keep the earth and the heavens intact, and it is said that one day they will run out of iron and will begin to eat their own tail which when this happens, the world will be destroyed. While the Great Serpent himself is heavily based on the Ouroboros and multiple religions, I believe the actual religion of House Varun is based on Christianity. A couple notes here, both are monotheistic. The Serpent's Crusade is a reference to our real world crusades. They are a large political power like the Vatican. The Great Serpent is said to have breathed life into the galaxy and one day will return, which reminds me of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Andresia also says she knows the future and how all non-believers will be cast into shadow. This reminds me a lot on how Christians talk about the end times. And lastly, the devil, while not an Ouroboros, is also portrayed as a serpent and also a deceiver throughout the Bible. And I think a very interesting connection here is the fact that while in unity, it is made clear that there are multiple creators. It is polytheistic, but the great serpent wants his followers to see him as the sole creator. He's deceiving his people. Overall, it is clear that the great serpent takes a lot of inspirations from our own religions and mythologies, but what does it all mean? Well, first, we must understand Varun's connection to unity. Andresia tells the player that she's not told the High Council about the artifacts, which could be a lie, could be the truth, I don't know, though I'm more inclined to believe her. Regardless, I still believe House Varun has a connection to the Starborn and the artifacts, even if they don't realize it. And that would be because the Starborn powers and the Varun weapons have similar effects. Between this and the galaxy-shaped scorch marks, it makes me believe Bethesda sees a connection between them. Then there are circular motifs in both, which I don't think is a direct connection. It, this one probably is a coincidence, but I think it's still worth bringing up, specifically because the House of Rune symbol reminds me of the temples and the armor railing. And lastly, you enter Unity while grab jumping, and Janan first encountered the Great Serpent while grab jumping. This again could be a coincidence, but I believe it is a direct connection that Bethesda wants us to see. I know I'm using this phrase a lot here, but I think it's too much of a coincidence that Andresia said the Great Serpent will encircle the universe, and so many religions have viewed the Ouroboros as surrounding the Earth or the cosmos. I also believe that based on everything I've researched, that the Great Serpent is a boundary between universes, or potentially the boundary between the universes and Unity. This is his role in the cosmos. But with the confirmation in Unity that the multiverse had creators, I believe that the Great Serpent is one of these creators. He helped create the multiverse, the temples, and the artifacts. What I'm unsure of though, is if he willingly stepped into his role separating the universes, or if he was made to do so by the other deities. And the reason I think he was thrown into this role and not chose it himself was the connection to Jormungandr, who was tossed into the sea by Odin. And then we could also talk about the devil here and how he was cast out of heaven, which is a lore bit I'm very excited to find out about when we finally get there. I've gone back and forth a lot on the Great Serpent, specifically on if it is good or evil. I've had theories where he was good and we would be teaming up with House Varun to save the galaxies. Editor Elijah here. My theory was that potentially the Great Serpent was a Prometheus type god 
and that him being the boundary between the universes wasn't something to keep us safe, but was more a punishment for him, for maybe giving us the artifacts, or maybe giving humanity sentience. Whatever it was, he helped humanity and was being punished for it. And I've had theories that he was evil and that we would be Thor, quote unquote, essentially, destined to face the Great Serpent. And so I've really struggled to come to terms with the morality of the Great Serpent, which I will talk about more in a moment. But what I feel confident on is that the shattered space referred to in the title will be House Varun attempting to unleash or awaken the Great Serpent. My theory is that throughout the DLC, you will be trying to find a way to find Varun Kai to stop House Varun, but we will arrive too late. The shattering will have already commenced, and we will then have to find a way to stop the Great Serpent. This shattering will most likely be the barrier between universes, leading to more multiversal jumps like the one seen in the final fight from the main quest, as we are either fighting or hunting down the Great Serpent. I also think we should consider that maybe the Great Serpent is a Starborn. It's not my favorite theory, but I think it is plausible. With all of their abilities, I think it would be easy to trick some lost colonists that you were a god. Also, based on Quetzalcoatl's ability to turn into a man, I believe the Great Serpent will have a humanoid form as well. That all being said, like I mentioned before, I've really struggled with the morality of the Great Serpent. There's so many references to a good Ouroboros, and so many references to a bad Ouroboros. Then we see things like the Zealots and the Serpent's Crusade, clearly bad things. But then we also have Andresia, who seems like a really good person overall. We saw them signing the Armistice, a treaty for a war they didn't even fight in. Balmor wants his people to be seen as more than just slaughterers. It's conflicting, it's contradicting. So I think the Great Serpent is actually two separate snakes eating each other's tails. As I said earlier in the video, the Ouroboros has been depicted this way. And I also think the House Varun symbol could be two snakes kind of intermingled together. Think of maybe Rava and Vatu from The Legend of Korra, which I know is supposed to represent yin and yang, but could also be applied here. It's two gods forever entwined, one good, one evil. One wanting to see the betterment of the universe and its people, one wanting to bring on the apocalypse and to cast aside all of the non-believers. And though their wants and desires may be different, they are still intertwined all the same. And I think this still fits into my Shattered Space theory. Regardless if they are good or evil, House Rune is still going to try and free them, which will bring an attempted end to the galaxy. And something I could totally see would be a House Varun civil war between the Zealots and just the normal followers of the Great Serpents, the main house following the good half while the Zealots follow the evil. I think this would be a great place to give the player a choice. What side do you want to join? What Great Serpent do you want to follow? But that is all for today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this theory. I'd love to have a discussion with it. I'm also going to be linking all of my conspiracy theory boards on my community tab. Please take a look at everything I've written and see what you can come up with because I think this is going to be big and I would love to be able to talk with all of you guys about it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. Mother Goose out.